Hello and welcome to episode 192 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is May 16th, and together with Robert and Goran, we are here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. Hi. When we Hi. talk about how Microsoft is a huge SAP customer, um, we mainly talk about our big essential SAP ERP ECC system, or the rise on Azure, or SAP s hana conversions that we are doing at the moment, but we also talk about the different <coughs> software as a service solutions that we are using from SAP. And one of these solutions is SAP success factors. Now, I would say that when you are using SAP success factors, in a lot of cases, your flow of work does actually not necessarily start um, in um, um, success factors, but outside of success factors. And one common place, like in our recording here, is Microsoft Teams. Luckily, SAP Success Factors has a great integration in Teams, and I'm really glad to have Vanessa Lee from SAP Success Factors team joining us today. Welcome, Vanessa. Glad to have you on the show today. Glad to be here. Thank you so much. Perfect. Vanessa, um, before we go into the topic and, and we take a look at the Teams app, um, can you quickly introduce yourself? What, 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 what do you do at SAP and what's your role in Success Factors? And yeah, ju just, just what are you doing at SAP? Yeah, okay, sure. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Vanessa. I am joining from the other side of the globe. I am based uh, uh, in Shanghai, China. Um, so I joined SAP a little over seven years ago. Uh, previously, in the first two years, I worked in another product, uh, so not really MS Teams related or success mm -hmm. factors related even. I was working oh, okay. in at a different product called um, SAC, which is uh, SAP uh, Analytics, Analytics Cloud. Cloud. Oh, yes. nice. Okay. The reporting tools. I was, I was for a little over two years. I was working on that product, and then over five years ago, I joined Success Factors uh, uh, and started working as a product manager for I want to say five years now, a little over five years. Uh, <laughs> I have been in the talent management area as mm -hmm. the product manager. Um, talent area. I'm covering mainly the goals management module, the mm -hmm. feature of goals management, how you set your goals, how you manage your goals. Um, but only very recently, actually not, not that recent, but uh, maybe over a year ago, uh, I took on the new responsibility of what we like to call the work tech feature area. Okay. Work tech means, like you said, it means in the flow of work. It means integration between success factors and other external third-party collaboration tool like Microsoft Teams. Mm -hmm, so I took mm -hmm. on this new role and my responsibility is looking at what are the integration opportunities, what are the feature integration opportunities between success factors and teams. So that is what I've been doing for over the past year. And, and I am the product strategy manager uh, for this product area. And I work with a lot of col colleagues globally on this product innovation as well. So that's oh, a little bit about me. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much for the for the introduction. Now, um, one thing that I that I always um, think about. So, so I have a lot of customers coming to me, or also as a partners that sometimes ask me, "What is SAP?" And then um, I start. Well, well, SAP is is huge. There's not one SAP product, and I have actually the very same feeling now when I talk about SAP success factors. There, there's not SAP success factors. Is so many things in the meantime. Yes, it is. Um, human um, resource related, but I think there are so many, many different flavors of success factors. So um, could you maybe talk a little about um, what actually is success factors and, and give us some some insights about that? Yeah, yeah, um, sure. So SAP success factors is basically a cloud based HR solution, human resource solution, and it's intended to help organizations manage their various HR operations. It is enterprise software, so to be software, business to business, and it's designed to meet the requirements of enterprise class organizations and aims to help improve um, business execution. So it covers the whole recruit to retire okay. life cycle okay. of an employee. So if you can imagine I'm joining a new company from the point that I am hired to the point that I retire. My whole recruit to retire life cycle as an employee at the company. So Success Factors is a big solution in that area because it includes the modules and features from recruitment 
to retirement. We have modules and features like recruiting. We like to call them modules because um, model think of it as like, yeah, think of it as like big product areas. <laughs> So recruiting is one It is breaking down into many different modules, of course, from recruiting to onboarding. Once I'm onboarded, there's learning, there's performance and goals management. I own goals management. Um, okay, yeah. Yes. Um, after goals, we have compensation. We've got the core employee central. We've got succession. We've got career development, et cetera. So you can imagine there's a whole life cycle associated with, with this. Um, and in this aspect, of course, I don't own every single uh, product area, but the, the essence is that we want to integrate success factors into Microsoft Teams in these small and quick, quick uh, HR related actions that I can take inside Microsoft Teams. So it, it doesn't have to be the whole solution being embedded or being surfaced into Teams, but only a very high frequently used, high frequency used, high value small actions that we include and integrate into Teams. And I can give an example of that in a, a bit later on. Hope that is, that is there just one question, Vanessa? Is there um on-premise version or only a, a cloud SaaS, SaaS version of, of the success factors? Uh, right now it is all cloud version, all Which cloud version. Great. In some, yes, in some small modules, I believe uh, payroll, payroll is still, uh, a part of it is still on-premise, but we are basically a cloud-based software. So most of our products are definitely on cloud. So we provide Makes standard, yeah. yeah, standard best practice solutions to the, to the organizations yeah good question when i said when, when you when you talked about life cycle and, and the whole onboarding process i was actually reminded um i think or i guess over two years ago or something like that we had colleagues from um the entra id or at that time azure active directory team there as well because they had also developed with success factors um an integration of their identity management solution with success factors because i mean mm -hmm. I, i'm a new employee in a company so what do i need i i need obviously all the hr related stuff i i would need to have my my bank details my, my home address and and all these informations there but i also need a, an email address i need an mm -hmm. uh, identity in my azure active directory and so on and i um uh they're they're the teams they had collaborated and um, together so that when an employee joins a company that the, a flow can be triggered that creates I, I think actually the flow started in in success factors because that's where where you said from the whole hiring and process from the from the recruiting um the information was already in success factors and now the process was triggered to create the identity in azure active directory or enter id to create the email uh -huh. to create office 365 and at that time we even had also an integration and i'm sure it's still there um with um, sap analytics cloud so, so that really, oh, okay. um, and this one identity was available in in all the different different products, and I, as the employee, could immediately get started. So I thought that was also a really nice, um, yeah, that makes sense integration touch point. Yeah, for sure. So, um, as you said, um, the, the the Teams integration is is, is now there. Um, yes. The um, and it, it can integrate into uh into into success factors can, can you give us an, an idea or can you show us actually how um this this teams integration looks like yeah so before i show you maybe mm -hmm. uh i talk a little bit about the the strategy and the vision yes. that we have yeah. for mm -hmm. yeah for, for teams integration um so we like to call this new innovation product work tech Mm -hmm. uh, or workplace technology, so abbreviated as work tech, and it's intended to help employees do their best work very efficiently. Because you know we live in a world that is very fast changing, um, like like the pandemic happened. You know uh, nobody saw that coming. So the pandemic brought many changes to the way people work. So the rise of consumer level expectations for these work tools and and shifting perceptions of work-life balance are, are changing. And so in, in a world that is changing like that, we use collaboration tools to improve the teamwork. And that has become incredibly crucial because it's the beginning, it's the start of a whole di uh, diagram shift to a virtual world, right? And our vision is that with the integration of Microsoft Teams, we can optimize the steps in the employee journey mm -hmm. 
because by by bringing success factors solutions into the flow of work with this integration, we give employees what they need at the moment of need, what they need, first of all, and at the moment of need and within the process they are working in without jumping to and yeah, from yeah. Um, the applications. Um, because they're in teams already, they're working in teams. So why not just stay in teams and get your HR processes done? So we have come out with a success factors app in Microsoft Teams. It's called it's just called SAP Success Factors. It's an application in Microsoft Teams App Store, and it is going to be the go to app for employees, for managers, for organizations to see uh, who speak uh, who seek support and insights to accomplish you know some kind of a strategic work from boosting productivity to getting you know hidden intelligence um, and also driving a positive culture and collaboration so we really want the app to ultimately elevate the experience and uh, the experience of intrinsic motivation at work and of course we're starting with teams because that's what most of our customers are using as a collaboration tool um, but you can imagine Imagine us expanding to other work tools, work tech tools in the future. But definitely Teams is the most important focus that we're uh, focusing on right now. Yeah, um, th that's actually really cool because I personally, I'm working very closely with the um, SAP S4 HANA colleagues. And they've mm -hmm. also published already um, a Teams app um, in the in the team store. And, and from there, they, they have some nice capabilities where from your SAP um, S4 HANA success, uh, sorry, S SAP S4 HANA user interface, you can easily start a chat or or share a card or, or, or interact with Teams and and um, also the other way around. So so it's a really really nice integration for S4 mm. HANA, and um, obviously for for success factors, I can see the very same value add for for our customers. Exactly, exactly, and I can show a bit of a demo today, mm -hmm. um, so that is visualize and you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm just sharing my screen here. Hopefully you can see yep. it's going to be a video demo today. Mm -hmm. um, so we have just published the application to the App Store. I want to say early March. Um, so here's a very quick preview and just uh, an overview of what the app looks like. So um, as you can see here, I am in Teams. I have the SAP Success Factors app already enabled and installed. I can pin it to the left hand side panel here. Of course, you would need to enable it and download it from the App Store first, but assuming I have, I've already done that. Um, so you go into the chat tab and you can just start interacting with the with the underlying bot, I want to say, the Success Factors chat bot here. Um, so why why don't we try typing in help, the command help, and see what mm -hmm, happens? Mm -hmm. Immediately, we see a card that looks like this being returned. This card is a quick action card, and it sort of lists you a couple of quick actions available to you as an employee. Um, and you can see we have about seven, seven different actions here that you can do related to your HR process. Manage my team, manage my data, request feedback, clock time, create activity. And of course, these activities are completely configurable and it respects the permission model that you have at SuccessFactors. Mm -hmm. uh, you might you might know that success factor solutions are highly highly flexible highly configurable so whatever actions are available to you it is up to your configuration and up to your permission model so if i have permission to access you know the feedback feature yep or the clock time feature i will be able to see this capability uh, appearing to me in this quick action card like we like to call it the, the card for quick actions so in a way we respect the success factors permissioning model today and we don't want to violate that so you may imagine some customers or some users going into the app and seeing more of the actions or even seeing less of the actions because whatever is available here is of course very flexible and um, as an example here i'm logged in as as a manager and I have I have ability to go into you know to see all of these available actions and I want to mm -hmm. manage my team so that's what I'm going to do I clicked on the manage my team button here and immediately I see a pop-up of a list of my ah, direct yeah. reports I can click you know one of my direct reports called Yvette Williams and immediately I see these change in view scenarios so these are related to that person that profile the person's profile mm -hmm. i can view you know their call center i can change the <clears> legal name of course 
respecting permissioning because I'm not supposed to have access to any of the data or any of the um, information of that person if I don't have this set up, if I don't have the permissions set up properly. So assuming that I have the permissions to view all of this data for the sake of the demo, um, I do have all the permissions set up and I'm just going to click, you know, view cost center and immediately I can, I clicked on view cost center and the re results of that is appears yep. on the screen here. And you can imagine I go mm -hmm. into um, any of any other quick actions here and do the same. Was there a question just now? Yeah. Are you using um, Entra ID or Microsoft AD here for the uh, user auto authentication across the software yes. stack? Great. We are using yeah. uh, Azure <laughs> AD. Um, this is a, a, a bit technical because before you set up, before you download um, this application, you would need the administrator to set up the user mapping between the two systems because yeah. we mm -hmm. need to know who you are, right? We yes. need to know who you are in success factors. We need to know who you are in teams. Um, and then we map the two users together. We right. have a, um, a number of mapping fields, of course, available, and this is in the configuration side and success factors because an admin has to do the mapping themselves, assuming they have already done that. And of course, it's a bit technical and I'm, I'm not going to show a demo of that today, but after that setup is done, the user will be able to directly go into the app itself and have this user mapping already so they can access uh, various data from success factors. Uh, it's just a very quick uh, I want to say interface to be able to access the data in success factors. And mm -hmm. yeah, and you can imagine this goes for the same for the other actions like manage my data. If I click into here, I can see um, these are my data and I can view them and change them if I have permission. Like if I want to change my legal name, right? The data, of course, I can change it here in Teams and the data gets written back to success factors. Um, I'm going to change my middle middle name, for example, or I just deleted my new middle name and I want to submit that request back to success factors. And I can do that very easily in Teams and I, I don't need to jump back to success factors for that. That's just one of the examples. Mm -hmm. The same goes with like, you know, other quick actions like requesting feedback. Um, I'm working with somebody on a project for a while. I want to request feedback from my colleague Anya Singh. Um, this is a functionality that already exists in the success vertex today, but we want to replicate this and bring this to teams mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that the user doesn't have to, you know, jump to SF mm -hmm. um, because it, it's, a, it's a very high, highly frequently used feature, as you would imagine, right? You know, requesting and giving feedback to a colleague. Um, so that's what this feature is doing. Um, apart from clicking on the card itself, we actually also have another, another functionality is, is triggering the, the, the features through the command uh, chat box at the bottom here. Like mm -hmm. you, you can see, I just typed in give feedback, right? Mm -hmm. um, right now in the very first release, we only support fixed commands so that you would have to type in exactly the words give feedback for our bot to recognize your intention and it, it will return you a quick action to help you proceed with the task. So it's going to do some user intent mapping here. So right now we don't support natural language. Um, so you cannot speak to our app using natural language. It has to be a fixed command. And what this does is that it opens up the give feedback functionality again. So that you can just, you know, type in some fields, send the feedback to your, to your colleagues. But very, very soon down the, the roadmap, um, actually, it, in the second half of this year, we will be integrating with AI so that you will be able to interact with our bot um, directly using natural language. So I can write a sentence, you know, in the chat box mm -hmm. here yes. um, and have that do some interaction. And I can clock time as well. I want to clock my time. That's also a very high frequently used functionality. I do I do that every day. I need to clock in, clock out, punch time at, at, at success factors. And I can do that very quickly here in Teams. Um, and the list goes on, you know, I can create an activity because uh, I want to I want to actually record my day to day uh, and send that for review for my manager and I can record the activities I, I did all day here in, in teams as well. Yeah, so I guess that's basically the very small overview of um, what we offer uh, in a nutshell. We we want to bring in, you know, the very very high frequently used but very simple <clears throat> transactions into teams it, it, it cannot be complex right because we want people to finish yeah, yeah. this transaction 
very quickly. So we, we cannot bring in very complex workflows because success factors can get complex. So the strategy is we bring in small forms and small pieces of quick actions that the user can do very quickly. Um, and apart from you know those actions, we have a bunch of notifications as well, as you can see from the list here, because not only do I have to act on something very proactively, I also want to be reminded and I want to be able to approve content on the spot. So things like, you know, doing my learning or um, completing my 360 evaluation form. Uh, an example of what that looks like is, is here. Um, so in the chat area, I will be able to receive notifications, reminders from success, being sent from success factors to teams directly. And the mechanism we use here is sort of a, a, a subscriber, a, an event mechanism. So whatever is happening, in success factors, we subscribe to that event and you will be able to receive sort of reminders as it gets closer to the due date. Those reminders will trigger a card and that card gets sent to success factors. Like, for example, this job applications card. I see there's an update. I, I apply to a job, an internal job, maybe a while a while ago, and now there's an update to that job and I want to view what update that is. And I can see a reminder of that for me to, you know, jump to the system to see the update. And of course, like approvals, job offer approvals, assuming I'm a manager, right? Um, and one of my employees have applied for a job role or I have a job offer being sent to me and I want to see uh, whether or not I, I could, I want to approve that and I can just approve that on the spot. Or even reminders for me to take time off. You know, I haven't been, mm -hmm. I haven't took any time off for, for over three months. Um, hey, do you want some time off? Uh, and this will be another reminder card that we see here as well. Compensation, find out what's new, as well as, you know, performance review forms as well, and learning assignments, learnings that are overdue. Yeah, I think this, this that's is basically fantastic. the overview. <clears throat> No, I think that this is really, really great. And um, as you said, I mean, you're, you're you're replicating basically some of the functionality. So I guess I can still go into success factors and do these very same things directly from the success factors user user interface. But exactly. for example, if I, as you said, just want to or need to approve or confirm a, a learning assignment or something like that, or if I need to approve a leave request, um, then Correct. I, I can just get the notification in, in Teams I click a button, I approve it, and and then then it's done. So I I, I can definitely see a lot of values where, um, yeah, I I get the um, a similar maybe maybe simplified user experience in Teams, but obviously the single source of truth is my SAP Success Factor systems. So so Correct. that's where where exactly. everything relies and uh, is is always up to date. All, all of the data eventually is sent back to success yeah. factors. I'm, I'm submitting new records every single day. I'm approving mm -hmm. records every single day. And the data is, of course, stored back to success factors. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to show a second demo, and this is c upcoming in the May release uh, by the mm -hmm. end of the month. So sneak peek um, wow. to the guys on the, on the call here and also uh, people who are watching this. Um, so we will be very soon... Uh, we're releasing a new tab in in the our app, which is the home tab, as you can see from the from the upper area here. Previously, I just showed you the chat tab where yeah, you could yeah. interact with the chat bot. But now we have a home tab. We like to call this the home page, mm -hmm. the home page of your mm -hmm. success factors app. And what this home page does is that it gives you uh, a quicker access or we like to call cards, cards that are uh, intended to remind you of something um, that you can just access here and does not need to jump back to success factors. So we have a couple of uh, sections. First of all, we have the personal information section. What call center? What What is my HR contact? Second of all, we have the to do section. These are sort of the actions that being are being sent to you because uh, it requires your attention. Uh, and examples are like approvals or learning assignments. That is the second section. Um, and I can, you know, scroll back and forth and just do some actions directly on the spot. And of course, the third, the third section is the quick action section. So I can access some of the very popular or very frequently used um, HR related transactions, like viewing my pay statements, recognizing and sending a spot award, clocking my time. Mm -hmm. And I can do that on the homepage. So 
uh, as an example, I want to, for example, scroll through my to do list. OK, I see I have an, I have an approval that I need to do today. I want to approve it on the spot and done. I just clicked yeah. approve and now that card disappears. The same with learning. I click into the learning card and, and you can see I jump directly into the success factor system. This is the success factor system. Mm -hmm. I have an I have a, a learning course called machine learning and it is nearly overdue or at least it's already overdue and I need to learn this course. So I I jump directly to success factors from the home page. And of course, you know, other other approvals like um, another learning approval that my direct report has, I can click into the card to see the details and I can decide to whether or not I want to approve or decline on the spot. I can even approve with comments as well, and that comments get saved back to success factors. Um, and you, you can imagine us doing, you know, sending spot <clears throat> awards directly on the homepage as well. If I want to recognize somebody, my colleague William, for example, I want to send that person um, a well done award. And in return, that person receives the reward in a, in a form of a card as well. So if, I, if I'm if i logged in as this, you know, user William, I'll be able to see that card appearing for myself for that William person as well. Mm -hmm. um, so the end to end flow is sort of all in teams. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, the, nice. so that very highly boosts productivity, highly efficient, very simple tasks. And you can imagine us expanding out, expanding out the experience in the mm. future to make it more intelligent. Because right now, um, our main strategy is, is AI integration. So we <laughs> want to, inc to in, uh, integrate, you know, sort of learning recommendations and AI capabilities so that in the app itself, it gives you some idea of, you know, uh, the the recommended learning, the recommended skills that you that require for, for your role. Um, AI is also a very big topic and we want to incorporate this into the team with everyone as well. Yeah, yes. oh, yeah. With everyone. So so Vanessa, now I'm obviously very, very excited. Um, how how can I get it? What 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 are some of the the, the requirements? You you said it is available in the team store. Um, do I need to pay for it? Is it what about the the required licenses? So so how can I get it? Okay, that is a very great question. Also very fundamental as well. Um, I want to say that our app itself is free of charge, okay. so it doesn't cost you anything to download and use the app. However, the features inside it depending it depends on your license, your module license itself. Mm -hmm. So if I go back to the other example that I just showed you, for example, this this quick action uh, card. Quick action, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, the quick action card. Whatever I'm seeing here on the quick action card uh, is actually depending on whatever module license I have access to and the permissions of for that module license. So if if that my company my company hasn't purchased the uh, the feedback module, for example, mm -hmm. then obviously I wouldn't get this Makes feature sense. appearing in Teams. So the app itself is free, but the features inside obviously relies on the module license that my company has has um, purchased. It makes so, perfect sense, and and I I yeah. think especially also to this um what what you said that we are respecting permissions. So if I don't have permissions or the license to a certain module in um, success mm -hmm. factors, and obviously I don't want to see it here in Teams. Right. So so that, that 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 makes perfect sense. And I don't see any success factors either. Exactly. I don't see it anywhere. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Nice. Um, so the app itself is free. However, to get started, of course, you would need your administrator at, at the company, usually your success factors administrator, as well as the team's administrator. So these two people need to work together um, mm -hmm. to set up the connection between the two systems. So yes, you would I'm have on... to do a yeah. uh, correct. And also the mapping between the two systems, because we would want to know like which teams, which team's tenant needs to connect to which success factors environment usually usually um our customers they have multiple success exactly. factors instances you know like preview like test instance like production mm -hmm. so there are multiple instances so you, the administrators need to make a decision which exact instance which exact environment i want to connect to and do that configuration in the success factors admin center and the two people need to work together in that aspect once everything is connected and set up the end users who is logging on and doing the you know the task? The employees will then have access to this app. All 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 the end user need to do is to download the app and install it. 
But as a prerequisite, the admins has to enable it for the organization, has to do the connection first. Yeah, so and I, that requires a bit of, um, I want to say a bit of uh, a documentation. Our documentation will help guide the administrator through that process. Yeah, I mean, I mean working cross solutions and then figuring out how the mapping works, how the setup of single sign on works that, that's always a little challenging but if if they both if both of the teams sit together <laughs> and work on this exactly and, and follow that, your documentation then yeah exactly I, that that's what i say to my customers i i highly recommend you know two people fr uh, from the two uh, organization or from the two departments just sit together in one room and get this figured out um one is the success factors admin and of course the other is the team's admin uh, our mm -hmm. our setup process is actually very very simple mm -hmm. um but even though um it's a very simple setup we still get questions from customers uh, regarding how the setup yeah, so and, and we are at the very early stages of, of this app. It's only been in the app store for over, a bit over a month, I want to say uh, maybe nearly two months. Mm -hmm. So we're continually we're continuously getting questions on, you know, the setup and the functionality as well. And completely understandable, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Now, um, you, you touched already a little on, on this multi instance um, setup, but, but let's say I'm I'm a large company like 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 Microsoft. I, I operate in multiple countries. I operate um, yeah, really across the globe. So I I am still able to use this app in in one global Microsoft tenant, basically. So so very much like like we have at Microsoft here, for example, but then also with my different local success factors installations mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's also mm -hmm. possible well i want to say not right now um, okay. but this is this is great timing uh, actually because i just had this conversation with a, a big customer actually two big customers uh, i won't I won't expose the name right no, now, no, of course. Um, but, <laughs> but um, those two companies are very large enterprises conglomerates mm -hmm. so they have one global company but they have also very small subsidiaries in different yep. locations um, and usually what happens is that they only have one team's account mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. team's but they have multiple success factors instances yep. and the, their their request or ask is can i connect my teams to the multiple mm -hmm. success factors instances and sometimes it's the it's the other way around. It's it's customers they have one instance of success factors, but they have multiple teams. Multiple teams, okay. Multiple teams, and that is actually more complex. So the one the one to multiple mapping either way mm -hmm. either way is a is a challenge right now that we have uh, for this integration because right now we only support one to one mapping. Okay. okay. Once once we start to support one to multiple mapping, we need to figure out how the notifications and how the reminders are sent, you know, from multiple instances to that one teams, because it has to have a, a one endpoint at the end of the day. Um, mm -hmm. There there are some challenges with this, of course, but it is on our roadmap and also great timing, uh, of course, uh, on our roadmap for I want to say the second half. If not, it will go into the 2025 yeah. time frame because we're already having conversations um, and we acknowledge this re request already, especially for you know large companies. Um, but as of today, one to one mapping is supported. Yeah, another great question. I want to say. So, so, so speaking then of of large companies, um, typically, I would say if if I look at Microsoft, but but also about um, at other um, larger um, companies, they're they're often very specific things like like I want to have a certain corporate design. I, I want to maybe change and customize um, some some text and informations. I want to I want yeah. to. So so what can I what can I customize in this app? I mean, can, can mm -hmm. I make it specific for Microsoft or specific for company X, Y, Z or something like that? You know, that is one of the most popular questions that we get from customers. Can I customize the app? Um, I want to say the reason behind is that the name success factors uh, is not uh, is not completely understood mm -hmm. by end users. So even at SAP, you know, we use success factors, but we rename it to uh, we rename it and call it success map. So we don't oh, call really? it success factors. Yes, exactly. Even inside SAP, okay. Even inside SAP, we don't call it success factors. We call it success map. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in that case, the end users, they go into their success map and they, you know, manage their day. So that that is the 
uh, what we have similar, uh, we have a similar situation for other customers. They rename it. Yeah, yeah. So the name SAP Success Factors is not that well recognized uh, uh, by end users. And uh, for that, we will be providing the capability to customize the name, the logo, and the description oh, cool. of the app at, as of um, this release. As of the May release, originally in March when we first, you know, uh, deployed and released the app, it was not supported. But as of this release in May, uh, we will be supporting that, so that you can up upload your own logo. Um, you can rename the app, um, so it has a different name. And also another very popular popular demand from from our customers. Cool, great. Yeah. Good. Um. Th then so 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 now we we have our customized um app. Um, it, it has the, the the same look and feel that 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 I want in my company, basically. But then, um, are there are there other things that I can, um, I don't know, um, disable certain functionalities or 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 change the text of some notifications and and stuff like that? Yes, that possible. Okay, that is another um request that I want to. Maybe I'll, I'll show you very quickly. I'll share my screen again. Uh, do understand some of the concerns that our customer have. So, uh, that, of course, that, that's a great question. Uh, right now, we only support partial customization of mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. functionalities. So, as you can see, some of the text here uh, on this quick action card, we support the customization of the, the action name, for example, at the bottom here. So you can mm -hmm. rename it um, mm -hmm. to, you know, other names like creating a task. Sometimes they don't call it activities. They, they call it tasks. So I can rename it as add a task, add a daily task. Um, others like managing my team, viewing my pay statements. All, all of the actions here are supporting customization. And you, mm -hmm. you can customize the name of it in success factors. And that will get reflected in Teams because we're reading from the configuration from success factors and uh, displaying it here. But other text, such as the, the title and the, the subtitle of the card itself, right now we don't support customization. For example, the name, the title, and the subtitle here. But we will be supporting it in the future. This is on our roadmap. Okay. On and our roadmap. May, maybe a follow-up question to this then. What about different languages? I mean, here we see everything in, in, in English, but I'm obviously in German, yes. uh, Germany. Um, yes. you're, you're in China. So, so what about multi-language support? Great question. We support multi-language display here as well. So if you switch your teams to like, you know, German, um, all of the card, it will be displayed in your local team's language, even your <clears throat> local team's language. However, um, what is a bit little bit technical here is that even though we support multi-language, we still request you to configure the language settings in success factors. For example, the Makes name... Sense. Yeah, the name. Yeah, the names of these uh, quick actions. You may call it something different in German, right? And we will, we will allow you to configure that in success factors and have that reflected in Teams. Uh, and, and that applies to a bunch of cards that you see here today. Like this is the request feedback and give feedback card. So the function, the the default questions like what went well, what could I improve on, additional comments. These default questions are read from success factors. And of course Ooh. you can configure different languages. However, the title of these, like for example, give feedback, the <clears> subtitles. <throat> um, right now we don't support customization of these titles, but we will <clears throat> be supporting them very soon in the future. And it's of course another uh, ask from a couple of our customers as well. Uh, and also very valid. <clears throat> I believe when you get an AI native language integration, most likely you would be able to interact in basically any language, so to say on a, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Which oh, would yeah. be great. But, but I like this concept that you do, um, the, the, the configuration basically in the success factor system, and then that the app basically reads whatever is stored there in the success factor system, because obviously right. then I have the full flexibility about um, yeah, changing the names, changing different languages and something like that. And I don't need to update or or redeploy the app all the time, but but it's really Correct. reading this information from from the backend. 
Correct. Currently, all of our cards and functionalities are built this way. So, mm -hmm. a part, so partial card uh, content is read from a success yeah. factors and respects yeah. your configuration, whereas the other part, uh, maybe some of the fixed content we like to say, sometimes the titles are fixed, right? Um, mm -hmm. Those fixed titles right now are hard coded, and also we set the values of those titles, but we will be supporting your customization needs in the future. Yeah. Um, very exciting content on the roadmap as well. So, so maybe then one one last question. I mean, um, we, we talked about Germany, and in in Germany, data protection, um, uh, personal information is always something that is uh, <laughs> crucial. I would say where there's a lot of mm -hmm. um, concerns or where a lot of focus on this. So. Um, what about um, your personal information in in the Teams app? Um, is it is it cached there? Is it stored there on on the team side, or is everything only available on on success factors? So so what about the um, personal information and, and data protection there? Mm -hmm. So that also is a questions that we always get from from uh, customers. We don't store any personal information. Uh, mm -hmm. in Teams or anywhere today. Um, the only information that we will need to get is through the Microsoft Graft API yes. when, when you're doing the, the setup between the systems. So we actually call a Microsoft Graft API to validate the user, to check who the user is in order to set up the, the connection and the mapping between the two users in the two systems. Because we need to read and see who this user is before we connect the two systems together. So that is the only uh, API that we use to obtain user information. And, it, and it's usually the user's email or the user's username, depending on which mapping field that the administrator has picked to be the mapping field uh, of the two systems. So we don't store any of that, but we do require uh, one graph API in, in order to set up the connection between the systems. And, and as for the content read from success factors, uh, for example, what you're seeing here, the, the give feedback um, request, the give feedback transaction, we of course don't store any of that information in Teams because this is displayed um, mm -hmm. at runtime. Um, it is not stored in Teams at all. Once you figure out, because it, all of the information here is read from Success Factors. Once you fill in this form and send this back to Success Factors, it is stored in Success Factors. It is not stored in Teams. Yeah, yeah. However, um, yeah. However, um, another example is the cards that you uh, are displayed here as the reminders. I just mentioned those quick action forms are not stored. Yeah. But um, these mm -hmm. these cards. Uh, that we, we like to call them notifications or reminders. Those are stored in Teams, but there are no personal information associated with this. And it is subjected to the Microsoft retention policy um, mm -hmm. in the chat mm -hmm. history. So if you have a retention policy set up in Microsoft, you can, of course, purge all of the, um, the card content here. So whatever we send to the Teams app, it will get stored in, uh, if it's a notification card type, you know, it will get stored here, but it is subjected to the retention policy. Um, so that, that I think that answers some of our questions regarding cool. um, whether we store information here in Teams. This is the only one that we store, um, but you can purge them and delete them from the system. Oh, fantastic. I, I think um, now hopefully everyone is very excited and, and runs to their administrator and asks them to roll <laughs> out this Teams app for, for success factors. Um, I, I think or I can definitely see that this Teams app brings a lot of value for, for the employees. So I I hope that, that a lot of customers are really um, going to to use this this app and, and connect to their success factor system. Vanessa, yeah. any 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 other questions that we might have missed or any any other things that you would like to um, highlight on this integration? Um, so maybe I can share uh, lastly some of the the plans and exciting roadmap that mm -hmm, we have mm -hmm. uh, we have planned for the app. I am going to share another screen. Um, so I just mentioned that right now 
、uh, we have a lot of quick actions, you know,、uh, that we want to bring to teams. But immediately in the future, we want to bring in、uh, even more quick, even more quick actions, as well as very frequently used transactions and AI capabilities. So on the left hand side here, you can see in the first half we want to deliver these scenarios.、Mm -hmm. uh, we are actively working on them right now. Some of these we already delivered, like you know the request and recognition, the home page、um, experience,、mm -hmm. the app availability in the app store,、um, and some of these we are still working on right now. But immediately in the second half and beyond, twenty twenty five, we want to support you know natural language processing,、mm -hmm. so you can interact with the app. Using natural language, ask it questions. Hey, can you rec recommend me some learning courses? I want to improve,、uh, I want to grow, and I want to become a, a senior product manager. Can you recommend me some some learning courses? And what that does is that in the back end, we want our AI bot to understand the intent and go into the success factor system, look into the learning category catalog, and recommend return a lot of the learning courses to me directly in Teams. So that is one AI capability that we want to introduce. Very exciting. We are、yeah. working with them.、Um, we're working with you. We're working with Microsoft on on this aspect, um, to see、Perfect. which AI capability that we that we can in integrate with, um, and of course,、uh, supporting delegated type permission. Th this is a bit、oh. a bit technical, uh, because right now our app is. Application type we require application type permissioning,、um, but、uh, some requests from our customers suggest that they want to switch to delegated type.、Um, so that、uh, single sign on, single sign on, yes, and、yeah. which means the end user has to do the login and do the consent yeah. themselves, yeah.、Um, which is also a valid use case. So that we would want to provide this in the future、mm. and give customers the option in our admin center. Do you want? The application type mm -hmm, connection, mm -hmm. or do you want the delegated type? We will provide an option there. So we are working on this very actively、um, in, in in as we speak right now.、Mm -hmm. So those two are are mainly Ooh,、um, yeah. our plans. Yeah, and also you know supporting MS GCC environment. You know the government、mm -hmm. cloud,、yeah. very special environment. Of course, we have special environments in Success Factors、mm -hmm. today, but the app is not supported in a GAC a GCC environment.、Uh, we want to support this in the future in the second half.、Um, another important request as well, and you can see here just at a glance, we have you know more approval cards and lot, more、yeah. workflows. Quite a lot.、Um, Even maybe Microsoft Copilot integration.、Uh, we'll see、oh. how that plays out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the future.、Cool. Very, very exciting conversations been going on.、Uh, very challenging, of course.、Um, we want to work together in this whole、uh, AI aspect,、uh, of course. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it looks like you have a very full roadmap. So, so lots of things to do、uh, for for the next few months. Yeah. Very busy, busy, busy. <laughs> busy, busy. Yeah. <laughs> no, fantastic.、Great. Vanessa, thank you so much for for this for this great overview and and all these demos. I think、um, uh, that was that was really insightful and and seeing these scenarios and and then talking about、um, what is behind, how you can customize it, what what about、um, data protection, and now also the roadmap. I think that was that was really really great. Thank you so much for for joining us and 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 maybe in a year from now or something like that when when you have the the natural、yeah. language integration, maybe even the co-pilot integration. Maybe well, you、yeah. can come、um, back to our show to to give us an update. Great, um, happy to, happy to. This is very exciting. Yeah,、I、had so much fun today. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Great.、Okay. Thank you. Thanks you for having、time. me.、Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.